After years of waiting, Dying Light 2 finally got a Walking Dead update. What is this? Ladies and gentlemen, Tencent is set to indirectly acquire Dying Light Studio Techland by purchasing approximately 67% of their shares. And response from the community has been pretty damn positive. Everyone is overjoyed and excited for what's to come, with the once independent studio now being held at the throat of investors once again. We had a good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. It was perfect, but no, you just had to blow it up. I swear Tech one must have some sort of humiliation fetish because there are times where they're doing great things with dying light 2 at the moment and they just want to go and ruin it they want to end their streak and get all that backlash and hateful comments back up in there in a recent public press release from the ceo of techland he stated we dream of turning dying light into the ultimate zombie game experience for players worldwide providing you with multiple astonishing adventures and pushing the boundaries of solo and online modes to a totally new level. Our open world action RPG in a fantasy setting is already shaping up to become something truly special. And the goal here is to make sure it will live up to the expectations for our first new IP in almost a decade. Can we make these dreams come true? Yes, we can. But what we realize is that the best, boldest dreams can only be achieved while working side by side with like-minded friends and strong partners who share the same vision, passion, and have the willingness to back it up with their knowledge, experience, and capabilities. Today, I am happy to announce the partnership with Tencent, who are in the process of becoming Techland's majority shareholder. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Teaming up with Tencent will allow us to move full speed ahead with the execution of the vision for our games. We have chosen an ally who has already partnered with some of the world's finest video game companies and helped them reach new heights while respecting their ways of doing things. We will retain full ownership of our IPs, maintain creative freedom, and continue to operate the way we believe is right. I'm also going to continue serving as the studio's CEO. Friends, this is an interesting place to be, as it could very well be the beginning of the end if things go south, where the current state of Dying Light 2 could drastically change over time or have little to no effect, which is ideal. But unfortunately, for me to provide you with proper insight on what exactly this entails, I need to discuss something that I tried to avoid for the longest time on this channel, politics. I never wanted to do this. I wanted to keep real world problems away from this channel as this was just meant to be a sort of safe place for people to come over here and talk about games and share passions together aka dying line but because when it comes to tencent you cannot talk about them and what exactly they are who they are and what they're going to bring to the table for Techland without diving into the world of politics. So we're going to rip that band-aid right off today, okay? And for anyone that is remotely familiar of, of Tencent, knows how concerning this could be. For those unaware, imagine if Activision Blizzard and, and EA, they, they had a baby, and then we turn that evil scale up by 100. This is a company that was built on blatant plagiarism, copying other games, making mobile ripoffs of popular games, and being caught up in countless lawsuits because of it. And when it comes to their response to everything that I just stated, they said that to copy is not evil. That is what the co-founder of the company said. Why make something original and unique when you can just copy it? This is the type of company that we are dealing with. They are one of the biggest technology companies to ever exist. They are a massive technology Chinese-based company that's looking to expand right now. And that's why they're going ahead and purchasing Techland. The old days of Microsoft purchasing Techland, those rumors are over. Techland and Tencent it's now a reality. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. So Tencent, they also help create PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile. They are the full owners of Riot Games and League of Legends, and they are a massive company looking for growth at the moment. They are constantly trying to spread itself across the world, 
by acquiring as many companies as possible. And during their uprising, they were huge driving forces behind implementing microtransactions into their mobile apps and also mobile games. And they are partly the main reason why mobile games are a literal nightmare when it comes to pay to win elements and microtransactions in general. Their strategy for a good portion of time was copying games that were relevant and pushing boundaries, pushing expectations in Western markets, bringing it over to the Asian territories, making those games free to play, spending little to no time on development making sure it runs on the most devices possible and then just littering it with microtransactions for example they have a game called crossfire which is basically a clone of counter-strike and that game is incredibly pay to win it's actually one of the highest grossing video games of all time where it has a total of over 1 billion registered players and the revenue for that is in the billions and it's a game that you probably never heard of because the whole pay to win microtransactions it doesn't really vibe that well with the whole western audiences than it does to the asian territories in 2022 tencent earned roughly 2.2 billions for a game called honor of kings it's a league of legends inspired like game but it always wasn't like that the story behind that game is a really compelling one because it's very relevant to what could occur with Techland here they purchased riot back in 2011 and claimed in their press release that riot games will remain its independent operations and its existing management team will continue to lead all aspects of the company similar to Techland and then we fast forward a few years Tencent wanted Riot to make a mobile version of League of Legends but they declined stating that the game could not be replicated on smartphones so in response Tencent went ahead and created their own mobile game version called Honor of Kings and obviously Riot was extremely dissatisfied as it was blatantly ripping off their IP. They raised those concerns and then Tencent changed the game enough to not look like it was related to League. But at one point in that game's development, it was very clearly going to be a League game. And that game now has over 100 million players daily and earns them billions. I've been seeing it everywhere in the comments, on the Discord, on the Reddit. People are going, Oni, the CEO said, we will retain full ownership of our IPs and maintain creative freedom. That's a load of horseshit. That is PR talk, buddy. This new company is going to own a majority of Techland and will ultimately have final say in anything the company does and or even develops. If Techland does not abide by their request, Tencent can go ahead, withhold funds, or even threaten to sell their shares away. Techland will not have that creative freedom that so many of you dearly think they're going to continue to have. You know what? We need examples. Take Ubisoft. At the time, Tencent had a 5% stake in Ubisoft. And in order to get Rainbow Six Siege out in the Asian territories, they required Ubisoft to censor certain elements in game due to the restrictions put in place by the Chinese government. Now, don't get me wrong, something like this is pretty normal in the gaming industry where companies need to go and adjust certain things in order to release that game in particular countries. That's normal. There, there's really no issue with that. Different regions may have different versions as their government may have pretty strict rules when it comes to things like excessive gore and gambling. But in the case of Rainbow Six Siege, they had to alter maps, icons, different areas of the game in order to meet those requirements. However, when they did these changes, they did it for the global versions of the game. So the global release, no matter what region you were in, you got these changes. And I do understand, it's icons, it's purely aesthetic, and it doesn't affect gameplay even in the slightest. But when this company has a 5% stake and they are still able to go through and push these changes through, you can see why Techwin coming out and saying we will maintain full creative control is a little questionable. Someone on the Reddit put it perfectly. The best reason companies should stay private. You might not make as much money, but that's how you keep your company. No never ending quest for unsustainable growth, nor having to bow down to shareholders. In March of 2022, 
11th hour games developers of the paid last epic early access title at the time was acquired by tencent then a year later in may of 2023 while still in early access they added in microtransactions and it had a shop that was met with heavy criticism so much to the point where they had to lower the prices of their online currency a few years back tencent acquired turtle rock studios the developers behind back for blood in their press release they think tencent instated that with their amazing knowledge of gaming and unprecedented support it will help them create the ambitious games that they dreamed of while also retaining independent spirit will have no effect on back for blood and one year later god damn it now to go ahead and play the other side partnering with tencent it will give them the capital to to expand their ideas it'll make them be able to push out updates more efficiently and a lot quicker it, it will help them towards the path of achieving their vision that's only in the perfect world where, where tencent has real no say on anything that Techland is doing it is an entirely optimistic view if you go and look at grinding gear games the developers behind path of exile tencent owns 80 percent of them their player base shared the same concerns that the dying light 2 community is currently going through fearing that more aggressive microtransactions would come and nothing really happened in that regard the, the developer did keep its independency and and very little changed when it came to its economy but what did happen is that major quality of life improvements updates that make the current state of the game better for you the player was only enabled specifically for china while other regions did not have these already implemented features enabled for them community members were comparing themselves to a second rate consumer and beta testers for overseas basically if two people purchased the same exact game depending on where you lived one could have a better experience but when it does come to dying light 2 i can't really foresee something like this happening where where other regions get better experiences and get better versions of content but this is just something to keep in the back of your mind because it is a possibility. I just really don't know what they were thinking. Well, I know what they were thinking. We've got to have money. I just think that nothing good can come from this. The pattern of Tencent throughout the years is that, is that they scoop up games, add in a lot of microtransactions to prioritize profit and implement these anti-gamer strategies because it's all about money. Like, I hate to say this, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a massive increase in skins, weapons, blueprints, and more items being sold for Dying Light 2. It is quite ironic that the developer that built themselves on the foundation and, and strives on being committed and listening to the community is actively going to be working with a company that promotes intrusive ways to take advantage of them. I mean, right now, it's kind of already happening with these bundles. The hack on skin is, is the perfect example of that. The second this game starts to implement something like, like a battle pass or, or in-game currency, more live service elements, that's where the downfall really begins. I am kind of hopeful that they won't have a huge hand in Dying Light 2's post-launch support development than compared to Techland's new IP that is currently in development. Because the thing is, Dying Light 2, it's done. It's not like they're going and building this game from the ground up. I just think that Techland's future projects may be in jeopardy as they may need to go ahead and tailor their work to abide by the guidelines and rules of whatever Tencent says. Tencent's reach is massive and it could really benefit Techland with some crossover events and additional opportunities. But it seems that however Tencent determines if a company is profitable will determine how much their hands are in the pot if dying light's potential is to the great lengths of league of legends which is not who knows maybe a dying light mobile will be coming it's not like we have that already but the fact of the matter is tencent will want to see profits and if techland isn't hitting those or maybe they want more maybe similar tactics to microtransactions could be the norm moving forward now i don't know anymore man i'm i'm just I'm just tired, okay? I I think I'm over these these massive companies like like Microsoft, Sony, and Tencent just coming and scooping up game studios. I feel like now it's going to lead to this 
consolidation effect where companies like Amazon and others that they want to put their hand in the pot and then next thing you know only a few companies own all the game studios but I do digress let me know your thoughts down below about this I'd be very curious to hear it and with all that said I'll see you guys later bye bye